Good morning. Introducing you to another episode. Today I have Lisa Calantuono with me. She is the president of AAR Partners. It is a search consultancy that helps brands find agencies that would be a great fit to work together. Samantha has never worked with the search consultancy, so I had all kinds of questions for her about how it works and why it's so important. And she filled me in and gave me all the details. Have a listen. Welcome, Lisa. I'm so excited that you're here on Marketing Sweats today. Well, thank you for having me. I am looking forward to the conversation. Absolutely. I was reflecting. I think that we met, I I think we decided two years ago at the mirroring conference, you were on a panel of search consultants and I remember loving everything you had to say. Well, I'm glad I could (laughs) add something of value. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. I've always kind of coming up in the agency business, I think I shared with you, we didn't have a lot of relationships with search consultants. We're very much on the B2B side of the business, but I always was intrigued by what you do. And we're going to talk about that later, um, just in terms of there not being very many of you in the universe and and the relationships you keep are um, inspiring to me and I want to learn from you. But before we go there, I want to start with your story. Tell me a little bit about your upbringing, where you're from, um, and maybe how that led into your education and career journey. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's a loaded question. Um, (laughs) All right. My upbringing. Well, I come from a very, very, very large Italian family. Awesome. I love that. Uh, Which probably has an impact on what I do here. So my my the short version is my mother is the youngest of 10 children. Wow. So I have a ton of cousins and extended family and I don't know, you know, if you don't make your voice heard, you don't get heard. That's all there is to it. So, Absolutely. <laughs> uh, two, two things that probably stood out in terms of my childhood. It's, it's that, you know, making sure. yourself heard and being part of the group and learning how to deal with all sorts of very, very different personalities and very strong personalities in terms of uh, the Italian uh, heritage and food. <laughs> food, <laughs> food. You know, huge it, part it, of the culture huge part yeah. huge part yeah. so everything gets resolved over food and celebration over food and anything and everything is over food so yes. you know i think uh, that has a, a lot to do with what i feel in terms of uh, new business and growing relationships the best part is over food <laughs> i love that very cool So you come from a big family, it sounds like. Um, Tell me more about your interests as a kid and how that sort of laddered into you um, ultimately getting a degree in communications. Oh, okay. Well, there's such a disconnect here. Is there? Uh, Yes. I I grew up. Oh, gosh. Okay. So when I was three, uh, my mother and father realized there was something strange about me. I was the kid that put on the TV and watched the Philharmonic Symphony Orchestra. Interesting. And they realized, all right, this isn't so normal. So they dragged me at one point to piano lessons, and I was being prepared to go to the School of Juilliard. And really, truly be a concert pianist. That was their dream for me, to be a concert pianist. And uh, at Carnegie Hall, I guess, was what was in their mind. But I either wanted to be a professional baseball player, and since I couldn't do that, my other major, major interest was architecture. Interesting. So I went to architecture school, or shall I call it architorture school, (laughs) um, (laughs) which is truly the name, the nickname of it. And at that time, this was... 30 more 35 years ago i couldn't do the math today yeah there is no math (laughs) it's all computerized right so i ended up being very lost for a half a semester and somehow some way i fell into advertising and my school myit was well known for architecture, but they also had a degree in advertising. In fact, they had an advertising agency on campus, the whole thing. Wow. And I was like, all right, well, if I can't design houses, I'll design ads. Like literally, that's probably when, what went through my head. And I 
fell into advertising totally by accident. That's amazing. So I had no intention of going into this field, but God had other plans. Awesome. (laughs) You've mentioned big family, raise your voice, use food to build connections, (laughs) right? interest in creativity and design. So now walk me through how you got to where you are today. I think it's fascinating. You founded a business intelligence company that was acquired by Winmo. Um, And now you're doing all kinds of great things at AAR Partners. So talk us through how you got to where you are today. I got my master's. I wanted to start a my own little business. I, I created a lullaby CD. Oh, neat. Uh, I play the piano for many, sure. many years, uh, as, as we said. And um, I wanted to create this lullaby CD for infants called Classical Cradle. So I went back to school. I created this lullaby CD. I'm doing my thing. I start teaching. And now I want to go back to the city, except it's 2001, or just at the uh, beginning of it. Yeah. And if you recall, I, everything was going downhill. It had nothing right. to do with 9-11. We didn't get to 9-11 yet. Yeah, yeah. All right? So this was January, February, March, April. It was just a bad, bad recession, whatever it was at the time, right? Right. So nobody was hiring. So I go meet Leslie Winthrop who at that time in 2001 was the president of AAR Partners, Agency Search Consultancy. And I had not a clue what she did, what an agency search consultant was. Zero, absolutely zero, right? So I go and meet with her, and if, if anybody knows Leslie, and I'll say it right to her face. She is the quintessential New York Jewish woman that you can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> and love her like a second mother. Right. So we meet. I think I said 10 words to her 5,000 in 20 sure. minutes. And yeah. at the end of the 20 minutes, half hour, whatever it was, why don't you come and work here? And I looked at her and I said, Okay. Yeah. And that was the beginning of 23 years. Oh, that's amazing. I love your story. It's yeah. you, so much tenacity and initiative and so many women that helped you along the way. And I've had the same sort of situation. Yes. So that's yes. amazing. Yes. So fast forwards for me, because um, I definitely want to get to what you do today. Talk a little bit about how the organization evolved from those early days to where you are now and maybe share for our listeners some of the services AA Partners provides today. Yeah, well, AAR Partners is and always has been, always will be an agency search consultancy. And I'm very careful about those words. Um, There's a huge crop in the past couple of years now of matchmakers. Sure. And it really bothers me. What's the difference, Lisa? Because you mentioned that last time we talked. I don't think I get it. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Matchmaking to me is set up a coffee chat. Okay. Go meet with each other. See if it clicks. Talk about a couple of problems. Yeah. No. You don't go on a first date and get married two weeks later. Sure. Okay. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. This is a serious business and Mm -hmm. people's jobs are on the line. And I think people forget that. Right? Yeah. This isn't just a pitch game. And I'm all about reversing the search and killing the pitch in a way. Okay? Um, there's a lot of things that are unnecessary in terms right. of 18-month review processes and all sorts of jumping through hoops and uh, spec work. And No, you don't need all of that. Right. But, but you do need to take this seriously. And so, I, I really am a big firm believer that there's a difference between the two. Yeah, it sounds like it. And, and I want to dig into the process as you describe it. You know, I, I have to tell you, I reached out to many search consultants that I have met through the years. You're the only one that responded within 24 hours. You had a very clear message to me, what you do for agencies, not just for clients, mm-hmm. which I thought was fascinating. And you sort of have a approach in your mind, right? That you yes. like to use to really define if there's this chemistry. So explain that to us. Well, first of all, thank you for 
acknowledging that I answer in 24 hours because <laughs> that that is something that we do here. And that's not just me. I mean, I mean, it's me. That's who I am. But sure. it's not just me. AAR Partners was founded. First of all, the whole business was founded by a woman in London in 1975. Right. Yeah. So in the mid 70s, Lindy Payne had a brilliant idea of a shortcut to a short list, right? And basically being a registry. And it was, it was a registry model at that time, right? And that's not what it is today. Fast forward, I changed a lot of it. In 2018, I am focused on reverse the search. And okay. what exactly does that mean? Well, a lot of things. First of all, being agency friendly is a core key component of the success of AAR partners, right? You said it, I, I responded within 24 hours. I typically do unless something really crazy is going on. It might take me two days, but typically I will not go to bed until every answer, every email is answered by the end of the day. That's that just speaks to I the am. service you provide, you well, know? Thank you. It's and such a different experience than another email I got by an unnamed, I won't say, <laughs> that was like, we don't work with agencies. Thanks, bye. You know? So, and, yeah. and, and you obviously have a different philosophy. I have a very different philosophy. The fact of the matter is you can't help marketers unless you do work with agencies. Absolutely. I don't understand how else you can put your best foot forward. How is it that an agency search consultant is supposed to go find the best uh, business partnership for that particular brand and then you don't meet with agencies you don't work with agencies you don't talk to agencies you don't help with agencies okay exactly <laughs> and you said you meet with 250 350 firms a year easily in one way or another i'm, I'm talking to agencies all the time in fact, awesome. first of all, two, two to four times a year, I take an entire week and just go meet with agencies. It's, it, there's, that's so there's cool. something I want your job. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very, you know, there, there's a side story to this. My nephew, who's now 16, has been shadow interning with me since he's 12. And oh, that's awesome. Every summer he spends a week and just follows me to every yeah. meeting I go to and go, we, we literally go to, and now it's we, <laughs> I, yeah. I literally go to somewhere between 20 and 30 agencies in that one week. Yeah. A lot of food. <laughs> sure. And I remember the very first year that he did it, he goes, you have the best job. It's so cool. I go, really you really like what i do he goes yeah you go to breakfast you go to lunch you go to dinner. there you go <laughs> absolutely i'll never forget being in college and i did a three-week stint in chicago visiting all the big agencies and just falling in love with the culture and the differences in culture right um so i have lots of questions for you about the evolution you're seeing in agency life but circling back i want to have you talk us through reverse the search kind of idea yeah so digging into why you sort of believe in this agency culture so much. I do. Um, like I said, it, it, without the agencies, there wouldn't be search consultants. Right. Think about it. You know, I, I always used to look at certain, I won't name names either, but certain search consultancies and there's this attitude, right? Mm. And get off your high horse. <laughs> Because without the agencies, you're absolutely zero. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Right? I, I mean, yeah. you can't do your job without the agencies. And the agencies are not to be considered as vendors. And they're right. not some lower class on the, on the totem pole. I mean, no, no. Right. You can't do your job without the agencies. And, and frankly, it's, it's also not what's the word I want? I mean, agency friendly, yes. It's not being manipulative in any way. It's, I truly care about the agencies and truly want to see successful relationships happen for the betterment of the brand, for the betterment of the agency, for the betterment of the client. But quite frankly, there's a bigger picture here. 
Yeah. It's for the betterment of consumers. And mm -hmm. I don't even like that word. It's people mm -hmm. and society. Right. Not, look, you know, some of the stuff, okay, whatever, selling. Yeah sinks okay whatever but right. and no offense to any sink company <laughs> we don't have but, any sink clients right. so you're good but you know i mean I, there are some clients we've touched over the years that really make an impact on people on people not and that's why consumers. you do the work right absolutely right and i i really am a teacher at heart as you, I taught college for 16 years. I taught piano lessons for 25 years. I am a teacher first. Right. And I love that sense of fulfillment of putting a thumbprint on somebody's life, making it a, a little bit better because of something I did, their life's a little bit better. Well, I'm a testament to that because like I said, you took my email, you took my call and you started consulting with me, I think within our first conversation. And I so appreciated almost the free advice that you gave me. I still want our listeners to understand when a, let's say a brand side client comes to you and says, we need to find our next agency. Right. Walk us through the steps in that engagement and why you feel that structure is so important to finding the right fit. Well, first of all, let's, okay, let's go back to 2018. I made a pivot, right? reverse the search. Why? What does that mean? We're still search consultants and we still manage reviews. Okay. But right. over the years, I've been tracking more and more and more clients are doing their own reviews. There yeah. are more marketer led reviews today, this year in particular than I've seen in a long time. But what most don't realize is that about 75% of reviews are marketer led. 75%. With really no background or training in doing this probably over and over and over again. Right. And it's, right. it's really because, well, that's my job. Well, right. not really. You know, your job right. is really about building brands, not sure. finding an agency. Now, right. to be fair, the very first day I met Leslie, I'm like, What's the big deal? So you go find an agency. Like I, right. I had the same thought in my head, but it is a big deal, right? And there are steps and there are nuances and there are things that happen. What do you do when the CMO leaves in the middle of a review? It happened to yeah. us, right? Sure. It, you know, what do you do when one of your finalists decides I'm, I'm pulling out when you want to go crazy because they're the front runner, right? What do you do? Like these are right. nuances that do happen. And you know what? Over time, you gain wisdom. Yes. And it's the wisdom that we bring to our process. So mm -hmm. there's two things happening here. One, reverse the search 2018. This We're on this mission of reverse the search, reverse the search. Okay, why? Because again, three quarters of reviews are more or less are marketer led. So in my mind, it was, okay, hold on. So if they're going to do their own review, why can't we at least be a resource for them? So we are okay. in a lot of different ways. Okay. But there's yeah. one thing we do <clears throat> three, four times a year that we're literally a resource to marketers, educating them on part of the agency landscape. And that's sure. important because that's if you're not educated in some way, you're never going to get to the proper shortlist. Right. Now, remember, we went I basically went full circle. The original AAR partners, it wasn't even called AAR partner. It was called Advertising Agency Registry. That's what AAR stood for. And it was a shortcut to the shortlist. That's what they were about. That was the business model. So I kind of came full circle and said, all right, you know what? If they're going to do their own, then if you can't beat them, how do you join them? So how do you educate them on a portion? Obviously, I can't educate them on every agency that's out there. But how do you educate them on a portion of agencies, the usual and unusual suspects, more about the unusual than the usual? The usual are in the trades. You don't need right. me for that. I'm right. more about educating them on the unusual suspects and those that are up and coming and they're not printed in the press so much. And well... 
how do you do that? Well, obviously I do a lot of things, but podcasts and outreach and publications and all sorts of things that we do to educate marketers, right? So that's this reverse the search notion, okay? That's the vision. The vision is, well, reverse the search, bring agencies to them, educate them on the agency landscape, highlight those that are legitimate and strong and have, you know, case studies that are, that are powerful and, you know, have the proof points. And that's what I'm trying to do for those marketers. It's as simple as that, because many of them that do their own reviews, unfortunately, and I don't have an exact number, but I'm going to guesstimate it somewhere around 75%, maybe 70, 65%. They fail. The relationship fails within the first couple of years. And we've gotten many of those calls. Right? Now, why do they fail? Because if you don't, if you don't start with the proper universe, you're never going to get the right agency. Okay. I want to dig into all that. So I love that you call it usual and unusual suspects because I would consider Symantle an unusual suspect, right? We're not very well known. We're sort of in the mid middle of the country. We're not in a big city, Um, but I think we have so much to offer. And I think you getting to know me and me sharing a little bit about our story about really investing in long-term relationships. You know, we have a 40 plus year client. Um, Do you find that these CMOs, when they're doing the searches, whether they're comparing the incumbent to the new guys, that they're looking for more of a short-term engagement, bring us innovative ideas, get in quick and then get out? Or are they really looking for long-term partnerships with their agencies or is it kind of dependent? On the business, uh, the, yeah. I mean, it depends on what the who the brand is and what the brand is and what is it that they're looking to accomplish. Is it is it a project? Are they looking sure. at a short term project or are they looking for long term growth? Like, okay. what's the what are the business challenges in addition to the marketing challenges? So that's number one, right? Um, yeah, we just finished a review um, and. It was for a project, however, in this particular scenario, which is not so uncommon anymore, there are clients doing reviews for a big piece of, uh, you know, big project, but with the intention that if all goes well, you're the AOR. Right. Okay. And that's, I, I... not that I think, I know that's indicative of the economic environment we're in. Okay. So yeah. everybody's just trying to hedge their bets, if you will. Right. So right. that's something that uh, we're seeing a bit more, you know, yeah. over the past few years now. Uh, that's not completely uncommon. But um, yeah, you know, the, the, the taste testing or testing the water or you know, giving the litmus test, whatever, whatever you want to say. That's a big part of things now, but everybody has to remember that a marketer, a CMO or, or anybody in the marketing department, their day job is not to think about agencies all day long. Right. Okay. It's just not right. Yeah. It's not their day job. And, and yeah. I remember in the past, uh, Emblem Health, we they were a client of ours for a number of times. And I remember the client saying, I have a day job and when I need yeah. an agency, I call AAR partners and I let them manage it. I think that's great that you can help in that way. It sounds like you really understand their goals and sort of the landscape of who they would fit best with. I've heard you say that you can tell when agencies and clients are meeting sort of if it's going to work based on how friendly they are, the chemistry part of it, right? What does that look like? How can you tell pretty quickly? Yeah, first of all, we got rid of chemistry meetings. (laughs) <laughs> okay. okay. Which is interesting because it really is. A, a lot of this is dependent upon the success, is dependent upon the compatibility. So I use sure. compatibility, oh, the term cool. compatibility, more than the term chemistry. See, chemistry. Is there a rubric to that? Yeah. The, the, chem, the chemistry is fleeting. Chemistry okay. is the stars in the eyes and you know, the smile on your face and the butterflies in the stomach and that's chemistry. And you cannot plan for chemistry. You cannot come these, this nonsense of 
chemistry meetings. Exactly what is a chemistry meeting? No, nobody knows. I ask that question all the time and nobody has an answer for it. Because Do there we make is each other the, laugh? yeah right I don't, right doesn't they, matter and the, it's it's silly it's silliness actually right it's sure. chemistry meeting is a date and there's the matchmaker thing okay ah, okay. okay all right that these are these are we're not having coffee chats right this is sure. real this is about business, business. this is real yeah. business real people's jobs are on the line right revenue has to go up we're not this is not a game. This is not Mad Men and just pitching and winning. And no, it's not. That's really not what it's about. It's about so, building relationships. That makes sense. So are you trying to make sure that there are measurable outcomes in these meetings? Or are you asking the agencies to bring sort of their best problems they solve? Because that's something you taught me on our first call is the agency should be able to articulate the problems they solve in a three minute video. Yeah, I thought that was fascinating. Well, and that is what it is, right? <clears throat> I mean, the, the bottom line is this, any marketer that is interested in thinking about agencies, are only interested for two or three reasons. One, can you solve my marketing challenges? That's number one, right? This is my marketing challenge. This is my business challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you understand it? Do you get it? Um, do you have proof points? Like, can you help me solve my business and marketing challenges? Number two, if you can, what are the opportunities that you're going to bring to the table for me to create more possibilities in order to, number three, increase my revenue? Sure. That's it. That, that That's the whole thing in a nutshell. 23 years later, that, that's it. That's everything I learned. <laughs> <laughs> Why do us agencies struggle so much to tell that story so succinctly? Well, because it, you're trying to win. And yeah. when you get into that mode of competition, you start to strategize and overthink and compete against somebody else that is known or unknown, which is even worse. You know, the unknown is even worse, right? right. It drives you crazy. And so uh, I remember an agency years ago saying he would, in a pitch process, part of his pitch, he would actually talk about what he does differently to his top, com compared to his top competitors, so that he was pitching for the business, highlighting his own merits and you know strength but was also trying to put others down in a tactful manner yeah that's and a really, lot just tell your story right, right. don't compare yourself <clears throat> to somebody else just tell that your makes story good sense. but but it, it it's it's not just about a story i mean it, it it yes it's a story of course but it's it's about real proof points um business challenges you've solved and revenue that you've increased in a short period of time, right? Impact, creative impact. What, what's going on out there? Like why do marketers go into review? I, I get that question all the time. Why do marketers go well, into I, review? I read your website and it says they too many agencies. There's no time to do the search and their last agency was unreliable. Is that typically some of the reasons? Some, yes, right? Those are some of the reasons. But the bottom line is it all boils down to one word, complacency. Mm. Right? A lot of clients feel that their current agency is complacent in one mm. way, shape, or form, okay? Uh, it's yeah. just a, it's a catch-all term. I mean, I've heard stories of, well, we're looking for a new agency. Well, why are you looking for a new agency? For what, for what reason? Do they not understand your strategy? No, they're really great strategists. Okay. Um, what's the creative like? No, actually, the creative is not bad. It's, it's, it's strong. It's pretty strong. Okay. Um, people moving? No, no. And now I would sit there and go, okay, well, excuse me, why are we doing this review? Right. They don't worry about my business the way I do.
Uh, I love that. And that's that's sad, actually. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's you that's a sad thing. Yes, you do. You really have to care, and you can't just celebrate the win you need to celebrate celebrate the relationship day in and day out you have to go through the ups and downs with that client and with that brand and look what happens in relationships they do get complacent at times right you got to work on it every you day you got to work on it every single day Absolutely. and you have to be proactive you right. have to bring ideas to the table even when they're not asking. Right? Yes. You cannot just rest on your laurels. You, you, you just can't. I mean, unless it's a um, mandatory review, then you know, that's a different situation. Right? That, yeah. is, that is a different situation. But Well, I want to make sure that I can pivot the conversation to back to you as a leader and a little bit towards us as an agency at Symantle. Um, Before I do that, is there anything else you want to add about AAR partners that you didn't get to share that you think is really helpful for people to know? Um, Yeah, I I mean, I I think it's very helpful to know that, yes, we are, our strength is an agency search consultancy. It has been for 44 years here in the United States and almost 50 if you pull in London and where it started. Uh, The pivot in terms of reverse to search is more of this modern way of looking at things. The search process is modernized also. Like we've streamlined things quite a bit. You know, you asked the question about the steps and what have you without getting into every little detail. I mean, it's streamlined now. It's more or less a three-step process. You can't okay. get any more streamlined, right? And yes, there are nuances to the steps and what have you. And then, and it's every review has its thumbprint, if you will. It's not just the same mold that everybody gets poured into. Yes, there's a framework, absolutely, sure. but every yeah. brand is different. Right? Yeah. And what yeah. are those three steps, just for my knowledge? Well, it's more about discovery. It starts with discovery, all right? Then it gets into development in terms of developing the relationship and the working relationship. And then it's decision making. And those are the three steps. It's as, and it's as simple as that, right? But there are things that are very signature to AAR partners during a process for clients so that they can make sure they're getting to a shortcut to the short list much quicker. The proper group of agencies are there. They are really capable of evaluating compatibility right. and that working relationship. And then of course, tools and expertise and proof points and case studies and marketing challenge, you know, all of that is part of this process, Absolutely. right? So again, it's, it's, it's not a game. It's not just yeah. about a pitch at the end. It, it's, it's just not. In fact, we sort of frown upon, well, we do frown upon any, um, you know, work that has to be done, creative uh, work. Uh, we, we, don't, we just don't get into that. We really try yeah. to make sure that it is strategically oriented. All right. So I always end with the same question to every guest. What's something you're struggling with right now? What's a question that you have for someone else? Since I love questions. Oh, gosh, I think we're all struggling with the same thing. And that's the explosion of technology and the extreme shortening of time. Sure. It's amazing what's going on out there, right? Wasn't it supposed to be this thing is supposed to make your life so much easier? This yeah. computer, this cell phone, <laughs> this this electric car, this whatever. I mean, it, 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 all this technology was supposed to make life so much easier. Right. It's a big lie. <laughs> yes, I, absolutely. I, it, it, and it, it, there's it's part a short. Why the and is required because we have yeah. all of these screens and social, and we've got to integrate it all. So absolutely. I, I mean, yeah, we're all struggling with the lack of time and sure. the need to balance professional and personal life. And for me, my professional and personal life are so intertwined because I really do love what I do. And I, and I used to say to students all the time, which I believe works for anybody, a student or not, 
truly yeah. do as you love, truly do what you love and be passionate yes. about it. And you'll never work a day in your life. I couldn't agree more. And you being on my show today has been a way that you've helped me live my passion, which is talking to people and getting to know them. So I loved meeting Lisa. She had tons of great insights. And um, if I ever need a search consultancy in my life, she's going to be the person I reached out to. When I reached out to her the first time, I obviously reached out to a whole bunch of search consultants trying to understand what this was all about. She's the only one that got back to me immediately with an explicit amount of detail. So she's your girl if you ever need somebody to help you find the right partner. Thanks, Lisa. Great to meet you.